At 4,411 meters, about 14,472 feet above sea level, this airport is higher than any other in the world. It's on a plateau where the nearest large population center is hundreds of kilometers away, and where the oxygen level is nearly 40% lower than what most people are used to. Despite all of that, commercial flights land and take off here every day. What makes this even more unusual is that it didn't exist until recently. In less than three years, a full-scale airport was constructed in one of the most difficult terrains on the planet. So why would China build an airport here, and how did engineers manage to make it work under conditions that most aircraft, machines, and people are not designed for? That's what we're going to look at. China has spent the last few decades building infrastructure at a scale and speed unmatched anywhere else. High-speed rail lines now stretch across deserts, bridges span deep mountain valleys, and entire cities are connected by networks that didn't exist a generation ago. These projects are not just about convenience, they're about proving that geography can be managed, even in the most difficult terrain. But one of its most unusual projects is not a railway or a bridge, it's an airport. A functioning airport where both people and machines struggle just to operate is something else entirely. This is Daocheng Yading Airport, part of China's push to connect areas that have long been isolated. So why would China take on such a huge challenge? To understand the decision, you have to look at the setting. Daocheng County is located in the far west of China's Sichuan province, within the Garze Tibetan Autonomous Prefecture. The region is known for its high-altitude valleys, broad grasslands, and the Yading Nature Reserve, a protected area of alpine peaks and glacial lakes that has become one of the most photographed parts of western China. For visitors, it's often described as remote, unspoiled, and culturally significant. But until recently, it was also difficult to reach. Getting from Chengdu, the nearest major city, to Daocheng by road took nearly two full days. That meant navigating hundreds of kilometers of mountain roads, many of which were vulnerable to weather, erosion, or poor maintenance. Tourism remained limited to those who could commit the time and tolerate the altitude. For the Chinese government, building an airport was not just about reducing travel time. It aligned with its long-term national goals of connecting rural regions to larger cities, promoting economic development in inland provinces, and improving access to public services. Daocheng had been largely cut off from modern transport networks, and the terrain ruled out high-speed rail. Air travel was the only viable option. But building an airport here wasn't just a matter of pouring concrete and setting up a terminal. The location chosen was not only far from urban infrastructure, but also well above the altitude where most people or machines can work without trouble. The decision to build here was practical in one sense. There was no alternative. If a shorter travel time was the goal, air travel was the only option. The bigger question was whether it was physically possible. Choosing air travel meant facing an entirely different kind of problem. Aircraft are built with specific performance expectations. Engine power, wing loading, takeoff distance, these are all calculated based on the density of the air around the plane. At sea level, the air is thick. At above 4,000 meters, it's thin. That means the engines pull in less oxygen, generate less thrust, and require more runway to lift the aircraft safely into the air. The same goes for landing. Less air density means less aerodynamic drag. It takes longer for a plane to slow down after touching the runway, which increases the risk of overshooting. To deal with this, Daocheng Yading Airport was built with a 4,200-meter, about 13,780-feet runway, one of the longest in the world. And it's not because they expect large aircraft, it's because physics leaves no other option. And it's not just the planes. The people who fly them are affected too. At 4,400 meters, oxygen levels are around 60% of what most people are used to. Altitude sickness, headaches, dizziness, nausea is common for new arrivals. Pilots on some flights wear oxygen masks during takeoff and landing. The airport itself is stocked with oxygen for passengers who begin to show symptoms. Announcements advise people to walk slowly, hydrate, and rest after landing. Operations here are not just adapted, they're rebuilt from the ground up to account for the environment. Construction began in 2011 and the airport opened in September 2013. 
However, designing an airport at high altitude is difficult, but building one is much harder. The construction of Daocheng Yading Airport took place in one of the most remote, least forgiving environments available in China, and it had to be done in a way that allowed equipment and people to function well above their normal limits. One of the first challenges was the landscape itself. The plateau may look flat from a distance, but the actual terrain is full of uneven ridges, frozen soil, and steep gradients. To carve out a 4.2-kilometer runway, engineers had to rework the topography, cutting down hills, filling in depressions, and stabilizing the ground. At this altitude, even basic earth-moving tasks take longer. Machinery loses power because diesel engines don't combust as efficiently in thin air. Trucks and bulldozers that perform reliably at lower elevations had to be modified or replaced with specially tuned models that could handle the lack of oxygen. Temperatures at this elevation stay low year-round, and frost is common even during summer nights. In winter, it drops well below freezing and stays there for extended periods. That creates issues for materials and machinery, especially during the curing of concrete. Standard mixes don't set properly in cold conditions, so workers had to use additives to speed up the process and keep the curing reaction stable. Then there's the human factor. Most construction workers are not trained to operate at over 4,000 meters, and the effects of altitude are immediate. Crews worked in rotations, taking breaks to recover. Medical staff were stationed on site throughout the build, and oxygen tanks were part of the regular safety setup. In total, the workforce was operating under conditions that would normally require mountaineering gear, not hard hats, and reflective vests. Despite all of that, construction moved quickly. Ground was broken in 2011, and less than two and a half years later, the airport was open. A project of this scale at this altitude, completed in that time frame, is difficult to compare to anything else. It wasn't just about getting the job done. It was about keeping machines running, protecting workers' health, and pushing through the logistical barriers of working at high elevation. The total investment was around 1.58 billion yuan, or roughly 255 million US dollars at the time. For comparison, that's significantly less than what many larger airports cost, even though the difficulty level here was far higher. That's partly because of a streamlined planning process, but also because speed was a priority, this wasn't just another regional airport. It was a logistical experiment that pushed construction methods into territory where they aren't usually tested. But engineering wasn't the only consideration. The terminal design reflects an understanding of where it is and who it serves. From above, it takes on a smooth curved shape that references the Tibetan kata scarf, a ceremonial white scarf used to greet guests. The building doesn't mimic traditional architecture, but it doesn't ignore it either. It uses symbolism through form rather than decoration. Functionally, the terminal was built with altitude in mind. The layout minimizes walking distance, keeps temperature regulation simple, and maintains visual clarity to reduce stress on disoriented passengers. Inside, oxygen supplies are available and rest areas are positioned for people who may need time to adjust before continuing their trip. Aircraft operations are tightly controlled. Pilots flying to Daocheng must undergo specific training. The approach path requires close attention to descent rates and wind shear. During takeoff and landing, some crews use oxygen masks as an added precaution. Because the airport is so high, there's limited benefit from traditional pressurization systems while on the ground. Flights in and out are often limited to daylight hours. Low visibility and rapid weather shifts make night operations risky. Aircraft types are chosen based on performance at high altitudes. Planes like the Airbus A319 are common here, and they often fly under capacity to reduce weight. Fuel loads are calculated carefully, accounting for the fact that takeoff distances are longer and climb performance is reduced. These are not small adjustments. They're operational changes built around the limitations of the environment. That's what makes the airport stand out. It's not just the highest, it's functional in a place that requires an entirely different set of rules. Since it opened, Daocheng Yading Airport has changed how people reach the region. Travel time from Chengdu dropped from two days by road to just over an hour by air. That shift made short trips possible, opened the region to year-round visitors, and brought stability to supply chains that once had to plan around road closures and seasonal access. Tourism increased, hotels were built, restaurants expanded, residents who once worked primarily in agriculture or seasonal transport began finding steady employment tied to aviation services, hospitality, and local guiding. 
The impact was not explosive, but it was steady. The region began to feel less like an isolated outpost and more like a connected part of Sichuan's broader development strategy. That's part of a larger trend. China has built several high-altitude airports across its western provinces. Each one serves a similar role – reduce geographic isolation, provide faster access to remote communities, and support regional planning goals that prioritize integration. These airports are not built for show. They fill in the map. Daocheng also became a testing site. In 2020, a Chinese-made regional jet underwent high-altitude performance trials here. The location offered natural conditions that aircraft designers previously had to simulate or seek abroad. Testing at elevation helps validate design choices for future aircraft intended to operate in similar environments. However, not everyone sees this kind of infrastructure as purely beneficial. There are concerns about environmental pressure, especially as tourism expands. Yachting Nature Reserve is a protected area, and managing visitor numbers without damaging ecosystems is a constant issue. Some critics also question whether rapid development in high-altitude regions puts too much strain on local culture and resources. These are ongoing debates. Still, the airport has held up, it continues to operate safely, and it has met the goals set out at its launch. It didn't erase the challenges of the region, but it made them more manageable, and it demonstrated that high elevation aviation is not limited to emergency airstrips or military outposts. It can be part of everyday transport. The story here is not just about flying into thin air. It's about designing an entire system, from construction to operations, to work in a place where most systems fail, Daocheng Yachting Airport doesn't run on assumptions. It runs on adaptation. That's what makes it worth noting. Not because it broke a record, but because it continues to function where almost everything about the environment says it shouldn't. It's also worth mentioning that Daocheng Yachting may hold the world record, but it is not the first high-altitude airport on the Tibetan Plateau. China had already been building airports in this environment for years, each one pushing the limit a little further. Lhasa Gongar Airport, opened in the 1960s, sits at about 3,570 meters, about 11,712 feet. Kamdo Bamda Airport, built in the 1990s, is even higher at 4,334 meters, about 14,220 feet and has one of the longest runways in the world to compensate for the thin air. For comparison outside China, the most often cited high-altitude airport is El Alto International in La Paz, Bolivia, which operates at 4,061 meters, about 13,327 feet. It's well known in aviation circles for the difficulty of its takeoffs and landings, Daocheng is more than 300 meters, about 1,083 feet higher. That gap might not sound large, but in aviation terms, it represents a significant additional challenge. It shows how far China was willing to go to make high-altitude air travel routine rather than exceptional. Now here is the bigger question. If China can build airports at 4,000 meters above sea level, what does that mean for the future of infrastructure worldwide? Could this kind of determination reshape how countries think about remote regions? Or will it remain something only China attempts? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.